Between 1969 to 1972, NASA, the American National Aeronautics and Space Administration, allegedly flew six successful manned missions to the moon, where they did everything from playing golf, to speeding around in a dune buggy, to receiving a live phone call from President Nixon. In reality, when examined in depth with a critical eye, however, these staged events are found to be nothing but a monumental hoax perpetrated on a gullible and unsuspecting public. 1. To begin with, the moon itself is simply a luminary, a non-physical light in the sky, and not a spherical terra firma planetoid as maintained by NASA and modern astronomy. On clear days, you can see for yourself, during a waxing or waning cycle, the blue sky through the moon. On clear nights, during a waxing or waning cycle, it is possible to see stars directly through the surface of the moon. And during each new moon, the moon completely disappears from view and remains invisible for that one day per month. Even members of the Royal Astronomical Society have time and again recorded their confusion at being able to see stars directly through the moon. For example, Sir James South of the Royal Observatory in Kensington wrote that, quote, on my first looking into the telescope, a star of about the seventh magnitude was some minutes of a degree distant from the moon's dark limb. I saw that its occultation by the moon was inevitable, but the star, instead of disappearing the moment the moon's edge came in contact with it, apparently glided on the moon's dark face, as if it had been seen through a transparent moon, or as if a star were between me and the moon. I have seen a similar apparent projection several times. The cause of this phenomenon is involved in impenetrable mystery. A star occulting a crescent moon has long been a popular symbol of Islam, was the symbol of the Ottoman Empire, is found on the flags of Algeria, Azerbaijan, Libya, Malaysia, Mauritania, Pakistan, Singapore, Tunisia, Turkey, and in the coat of arms of countries from Croatia to Germany, Ireland, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Sweden, Ukraine, and the United Kingdom. Nowadays, however, thanks to decades of NASA propaganda, people believe against the evidence of their own senses that the moon is a physical terra firma planetoid capable of walking on. 2. Basic physics proves that not only has man never flown to the moon, but that the entire concept of a vacuum of space is impossible. NASA and modern astronomy claim that the Earth's atmosphere spins perfectly along with the Earth up to an indeterminate height where it allegedly meets the vacuum of space. Anyone who has punctured an aerosol canister knows, however, that a positive pressure system adjacent to a negative pressure system must have a solid barrier separating them, or else they will equilibrate. Furthermore, at ground level, this spinning atmosphere supposedly travels around a thousand miles per hour and increases in speed with altitude so that by 250 miles high, where they claim the International Space Station orbits, the atmosphere and everything in it are allegedly traveling a ridiculous 17,500 miles per hour, the speed of a bullet. This means the astronauts in their rockets were traveling faster than a speeding bullet when finally they popped out of the Earth's spinning, pressurized atmosphere and into the non-spinning, non-pressurized, non-atmosphere of the vacuum of space. Even if they could somehow survive such a transition, once in the supposed vacuum of space, it would be impossible to continue steering, because all propulsion systems require the air in the atmosphere to push against. In a vacuum, there is no such counterforce, so all propulsion rather than sending the rocket forward, would instead send it spinning wildly and randomly out of control. In recent years, NASA has attempted damage control regarding this issue, by now claiming that the moon is actually still within the Earth's atmosphere. But this doesn't change the fact that they stood by this impossible claim for decades. 3. The amount of radiation claimed to exist in space especially through the so-called Van Allen belt, was far too strong for the astronauts' flimsy suits. Starting at an altitude of a thousand miles up to approximately 15,000 miles, 
NASA claims there exists a deadly band of radiation that would kill or seriously injure anyone passing through in a matter of minutes. One Russian study stated that the amount of radiation present on the moon would require astronauts to be clothed in four feet of lead in order to avoid instant death. John Molden, a NASA physicist, said they would need at least two meters of thick shielding around them at all times, yet we see them on film bouncing around the moon in their two-inch thin suits. Even James Van Allen himself continued to state until his death in 2006 that there was no way humans could survive the 90-minute journey through and another 90-minute journey back through the radiation belt without being completely encased in thick lead shielding. 4. Temperatures on the moon supposedly range from 279 degrees below zero during the nighttime, which is far colder than even Antarctica's coldest winter, and up to 243 degrees above zero at lunar midday, which is hotter than boiling water. NASA claims their special suits were fitted with both heating and cooling systems, but nothing which could come close to withstanding these incredible temperatures. The suits were also supposedly pressurized to keep the vacuum non-pressure of space from bursting their blood vessels, but they clearly have deep creases and wrinkles all over. Astronauts in true pressurized suits would look like the Michelin Man, bubbling out and very inflexible. Also, it is impossible for the Kodak film in their cameras to have survived these extreme temperatures without melting or freezing. 5. In images from Apollo 11, Buzz Aldrin can be seen wearing different color gloves and different length boots in pictures that were supposedly taken within minutes of each other. For example, in photo AS 11 40 58 73, Aldrin is wearing high boots and dark gray gloves. But just two pictures later, in AS 11 40 58 75, he has changed into smaller boots and white gloves. If Buzz was really in the vacuum of space in a pressurized spacesuit, he certainly would not have had time or reason to depressurize and repressurize his suit just to make these fashion adjustments. 6. None of the Apollo missions brought any extra studio lighting with them on the lunar lander, so the sun should be the only light source on the moon, and in all pictures taken there. In this case, the light should only come from one direction and all shadows should be cast in the opposite direction. However, in dozens of official NASA photos, there are shadows being cast in up to three directions simultaneously, often at up to 90 degree angles, which can only be the result of multiple light sources not present on the moon. For example, in Apollo 14 photo, AS 14 68 94 86, the shadow of the lunar lander in the background is being cast at a drastically different angle from the rocks in the foreground. 7. Many pictures purportedly showing the sun, as viewed from the moon, are clearly just studio spotlights and not the sun. Apollo 12 photo AS 12 46 67 65, for example, after computer enhancements, reveals a large light bulb in the center of the sun. After being thoroughly dissected by many researchers, NASA actually removed the high-resolution version of this image from their Apollo gallery. Apollo 11 photo, AS 11 40 59 35, also shows a conical spotlight effect extending from a light just out of frame that is clearly not the sun. 8. Several Apollo images show a defined separation line where the ground meets with what can only be a studio backdrop. If they were actually filming on the moon, the ground would seamlessly meet the background, leaving no such dividing line. Furthermore, when analyzed side by side, dozens of images reveal that NASA reused the same backdrops time and again on what are alleged to be completely different areas of the moon. The contours of hills, mountains, and valleys align perfectly when superimposed upon one another. For example, Apollo 15 image AS 15 82 57 shows the lunar lander set against a very unique and distinct mountainous backdrop, 
which when superimposed over image AS15821082 aligns exactly, but with no lunar lander, and a different foreground. Another example is Apollo 17 image AS17143-21972, showing a mountain in the background with a clear foreground, while image AS17136-20707 shows the exact same mountain, but now with several large rocks and boulders appearing in the foreground. There are dozens more examples of such repeated backdrops being used over the course of the Apollo missions. 9. Computer enhancements of many NASA images reveal photo manipulation and evidence of studio trickery. For example, as the Apollo 17 lunar lander lifts off, photo AS17-151-23201 shows a clear shadow being cast on the ceiling of the studio. Similarly, Apollo 14 image AS14649089, when yellow and blue are subtracted from the chroma scale, shows what can only be studio lighting reflecting off a black background. Another Apollo 14 photo, AS14669306, shows shadows of reticule crosshairs suspended in air over a print underneath, proving it doctored and not an original, as claimed. Apollo 12 image AS12497278 clearly shows several studio lighting lens flares caused by multiple overhead lights, and Apollo 12 image AS12487071 shows what appears to be an overhead light reflecting in Alan Bean's helmet. 10. Computer enhancements done on images of the Earth, taken from the Moon, reveal clear photo trickery. By gradually removing the hues comprising black from the backgrounds, a bright rectangular artifact appears around the Earth, proving it to be a composite image. For example, Apollo 11 photo AS11 446642, when manipulated in Photoshop, shows a distinct separation line where the Earth was added into the image. Another example is Apollo 17 image AS17-134-2471, which, when enhanced and edited, shows an unmistakable rectangular artifact around the Earth, proving it to be another doctored composite photograph. 11. In the original Apollo 16 photo, AS16-107-174-46, there is a rock with a letter C clearly engraved into it, as well as another C drawn into the dirt next to it. This is characteristic of fake stage rocks on a stage setup, where the set designer demarcates prop positions, and of course not something that would ever be found on the moon. After being exposed for this, NASA doctored the two Cs out of their official version of the photo, but copies of the original photo are still available online. 12. In several bits of video footage from the Apollo missions, there is evidence of the astronauts using wires to achieve a more weightless appearance. During Apollo 14, there are many occasions where light reflects off the wires attached to their backpacks, making them momentarily become visible. During the Apollo 17 flag planting, just as the two astronauts go to shake hands, light pings off the wires from the top of their backpacks all the way to the top of the screen. And during the Apollo 16 mission, when one of the astronauts falls over, he is quickly jerked back up in an impossibly unnatural manner that could only be the result of being lifted by wires. 13. One of the more obvious video anomalies is how several Apollo missions show American flags flapping around in the non-existent space wind. The moon is supposed to have no atmosphere, and so the flags should have remained perfectly still, but can often be seen moving quite boisterously. NASA claims the astronauts brushing up against them could have caused this, but that is clearly not the case, as the flags stay waving for long periods of time with no astronauts touching or even near them. 14. Another interesting video anomaly is discovered by playing NASA's Apollo footage at double speed, 
than watching the astronauts walking, running, jumping, or cruising around in their little dune buggy. Without the speed adjustment, there is a quote-unquote low-gravity illusion, as the astronauts seem to float, drift, and glide slowly and smoothly along. But once they are seen at two times speed, it becomes clear that they are in quote-unquote normal gravity, walking, running, jumping, and cruising at normal speeds. NASA simply reduced the play speed by 50% in post-production to achieve the desired effect. 15. Another glaring mistake is that none of NASA's images or videos show stars in the background as they should. Just complete blackness, likely because exact star maps as they should appear from the moon would be nearly impossible to fake accurately. The testimony of different astronauts on different missions in their autobiographies and interviews just muddies the waters even more, some of them bragging about the quote, astonishingly brilliant light of the stars, and others saying that they quote, don't remember seeing a single star while on the moon. Such inconsistent testimony and the fact that none of NASA's moon pictures feature any stars anywhere in their appropriate positions is yet more strong evidence of studio fakery. 16. Any sovereign-minded, critically-thinking adult that honestly examines NASA image AS-11-405922 of the Apollo 11 lunar lander supposedly on the moon will see a pathetic 1969 attempt at creating high-tech-looking equipment using flimsy construction paper, gold foil, scotch tape, and metal shower rods. The idea that the piece of junk shown in this official NASA photograph flew to the moon and back is so ludicrous it's laughable. Most unbiased viewers would assume your average high school art class could construct this contraption without much struggle. But official NASA spokesman and astronaut Don Pettit assures us that actually this 1969 technology is so advanced that even with their multi-billion dollar yearly budget, they cannot for the life of them recreate it now. I'd go back to the moon in a nanosecond, Don informs us, but NASA destroyed that technology, and it's a painful process to build it back again. Apollo 11 mission controller Harold Loden was quoted saying, The skin on the crew cabin was very thin, and that was all done because of weight saving. If you really took your finger and poked hard at it, you could poke right through the outer skin of the spacecraft. It was about the thickness of two layers of aluminum foil. Project manager Thomas Kelly concurred, noting that the skin, the aluminum alloy skin of the crew compartment, was about 12 one thousandths of an inch thick, equivalent to about three layers of Reynolds wrap that you would use in the kitchen. And Apollo astronaut Jim Lovell said, whenever I saw a model of the lunar module, it had these rigid sides, and really looked strong. Turns out that external portions of the lunar module are actually made up of mylar and cellophane, and it's put together with scotch tape and staples. We had to have pads on the floor, because if you dropped a screwdriver, it would go through the floor. 17. Apollo 11 image AS 11 40 59 26 shows a close-up of the foot pads of the lunar lander, without a speck of dust on them, and without a burn print or crater under its 10,000 pound thrusters, as if the LEM was just gently set down in place by an overhead crane. NASA scientists in their own documents were worried about the lander falling into its own massive burn radius, yet there it sits, with no burn print and spotless clean pads. Even the astronauts' boot prints made deep impressions in the ground but somehow the lander's thrust of 2,500 newtons left not a trace, no blast hole, and no dust on the pads. 18. During the Apollo 11 mission, Richard Nixon made a historic phone call from Washington, D.C. to Neil Armstrong on the moon, showing both men live on split-screen TV. AT&T Archives states that the call, quote, went from the Oval Office in Washington, D.C. to Houston, where it was routed into space via mission control through the capsule communicator. Even with today's far superior telecommunications technology, 
and at far shorter distances, there is a necessary delay, at least a few seconds in both directions. Yet when Nixon and Armstrong spoke, there was no discernible delay whatsoever. 19. Another solid proof of NASA's lies came with examination of the many supposed moon rocks given to museums the world over by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Shortly after Apollo 11, private investigator Paul Jacobs reported asking the U.S. Department of Geology head whether he had examined the moon rocks and if he could verify their authenticity, to which the geologist simply laughed and insinuated that people high in the U.S. government knew all about the cover-up. More recently, in 2009, curators at Amsterdam's Rijksmuseum investigated their moon rock personally given to them by Armstrong and Aldrin in 1969, only to find that it was actually just a worthless piece of petrified wood from Earth. 20. Not only is the entire video record fraught with fraud, but after years of ignoring Freedom of Information Act requests, NASA finally officially claimed in 2001 that all the original Apollo 11 videos had conveniently disappeared from their records so no one could analyze them. They would have us believe that they spent over $30 billion, a decade of unceasing preparations, then succeeded in the most historical achievement of mankind, but accidentally lost the video evidence. Those blurry, ghostly, black-and-white images shown on TV were purposely lousy, because NASA insisted at the time that all TV networks must broadcast directly from a big-screen display in their operations room, a mandate which all the major networks accepted, and so what the public saw was just a video of a poorly magnified video, and now it is impossible to watch or examine the original. Not only have the Apollo 11 videos disappeared, but NASA claims to have lost all original audio tapes from the Apollo missions, and that their contractors have lost all prints and plans for the lunar rover, LEM lander, and Apollo ship engines. This is no different than a schoolchild making excuses about a dog eating his homework when asked to show proof. The preponderance of evidence is stacked so high against NASA that anyone who honestly and unbiasedly investigates the so-called moon landings comes to the same undeniable conclusion. All of the Apollo missions were faked on Earth using a variety of Hollywood trickery.